In this video, I'll talk about the interrupt processing model for the AVR microprocessor. Earlier, I mentioned that there was one bit in the status register called the I bit, and this is the global interrupt enabled bit. It's a single bit that tells whether interrupts are enabled, that is, allowed and accepted, or whether they're disabled. There are many sources of interrupts uh, that can happen, and here are some examples of the kinds of interrupts that the chip can deal with. There's a serial communication port, Universal Asynchronous Receive Transmit System. So um, if the I.O. completes, uh, for example, it will be uh, causing an interrupt to the uh, processor. Uh, in programming the uh, electrically uh, erasable PROM or the flash memory, uh, there are interrupts to indicate that the uh, erasure of that is, is ready. Uh, those, these things take a little bit longer, so th there's an interrupt associated with that. Um, there are interrupts associated with the timer and the clock system. Um, also with the analog comparators uh, to watch for particular values. Now there's a reset pin. There's a little button on the Arduino board that causes a reset and uh, that uh, signals an interrupt. Uh, there are also a number of other interrupt uh, sources. Uh, they can be external interrupts that uh, can be uh, used and configured by uh, you, the programmer. Uh, so in addition to the global interrupt enabled bit, which tells whether interrupts will be accepted or not, um, there is a, a bit for uh, each independent interrupt source. So each interrupt source has its own interrupt disabled or enabled bit. Now I've um, gone over uh, some of the uh, interrupt types that can happen. Uh, in reality, uh, the system is, is fairly complex. Uh, for example, many devices have uh, several types of different interrupts. Uh, the timer has nine di different types of interrupts associated with it. The serial uh, communication port has three different types of interrupts associated with it. So it's a little bit more complex than just uh, I suggested here. Let me talk a little bit about a couple of sources of interrupts. And in particular, um, the power on reset uh, is uh, one that uh, is of interest. So as soon as the chip turns on, as soon as uh, voltage uh, and power is supplied to the board, uh, the microprocessor will start executing. And it begins with executing uh, a power on reset. Uh, in addition, there's a pin on the AVR microprocessor for resetting it. And this is attached to a button on the Arduino board, so when you want to start your program over from the beginning, you simply push the button, and that uh, forces the pin, and that triggers the uh, external reset interrupt processing. Uh, there is a watchdog timer. Uh, let me try to describe what the watchdog timer uh, is. It's, it's basically a system for detecting uh, when the software has a bug and has uh, gone out to lunch, perhaps in an infinite loop. So if the watchdog system is enabled, then um, we might have an interrupt of this sort. If the watchdog system is enabled, then the application program must periodically uh, feed the dog, as they say. Um, for example, every one second, it has to do uh, the watchdog reset instruction that I mentioned previously. So it has to issue an appropriate instruction every so often, uh, for example, every second. And if the software has a bug in it and goes off looping and something it, and fails to work properly, it doesn't execute this instruction. And a failure to execute the uh, reset instruction, a failure to feed the dog within the uh, allotted time constraint will cause um, a watchdog timer interrupt, so it'll cause a system reset. So uh, uh, it will reset the system. So this allows uh, some kinds of um, applications to uh, recover after they uh, have some sort of a bug or internal error or fail for some reason or another. Uh, you see this kind of thing going on in uh, space probes where uh, after 
uh, something's gone wrong, uh, perhaps it's been hit by a gamma ray or something like that, and the computer dies, well, they don't want to lose the whole ship, so after a, a while, um, the watchdog timer will expire, and the whole entire uh, satellite will, or space probe will reset, uh, and then they can s somehow recover uh, it and maybe resume communicating with it. So this is what that sort of thing is used for. Another uh, uh, thing is the brownout detector. Um, if power starts to fade uh, or, or go down, uh, we can have a reset that would occur if the voltage falls below a certain threshold if this brownout detector is enabled. So now let's look at interrupt processing. What happens when an interrupt occurs? Located in the flash memory is the interrupt vector. So this is a table of 26 entries and it's located at the lowest address in flash memory. And each entry is in fact two words. Remember that the flash memory is 16 bits wide. Each element, each word of the memory is 16 bits. So two entries together make 32 bits. So there are 26 entries of two words each where a word is 16 bits. And here's um, sort of what that uh, table looks like. Uh, at address 0 is the entry for a general reset. Um, there are other uh, entries, for example, external interrupt on, on pin 16 uh, would be uh, the sec second entry. Uh, watchdog uh, timer timeout uh, is here. Uh, there's, um, there are uh, interrupts uh, for the timer uh, and the uh, serial device. So for example, this entry uh, is for an interrupt that occurs when a receive operation is completed. Each entry in this table contains a jump instruction. Okay, this is a, an, a two-word instruction, so it takes uh, two 16-bit words uh, because it contains not only the jump opcode, but a 16-bit ad address. So each entry contains a jump Here's what happens when an interrupt occurs. Here is how the interrupt handling begins. First of all, when the interrupt occurs, the processor asks whether interrupts are enabled or not. The global interrupt flag, as well as the individual enabled bits for the specific interrupts. If this interrupt is not enabled, then it's not handled at this time. and The processor just waits to handle it until later. However, if the interrupts are enabled uh, and this specific interrupt is enabled, then the interrupt processing occurs. So the first thing that happens is that the processor changes the global interrupt bit in the status register to zero, which indicates that all interrupts are disabled. This prevents any additional interrupts from occurring while this interrupt is being handled. Next, the processor stores the current program counter on the stack. It pushes the program counter on the stack. Then, depending on what kind of interrupt it was, it loads the program counter with the appropriate address from the uh, interrupt table. And then it begins executing. The first thing is the jump instruction, so that causes a jump into the interrupt handler. Okay. Sometimes these are called interrupt service routines. But in any case, it's a subroutine that uh, you or some programmer has written to deal with the interrupt. And so now, at this point, the next instruction begins executing. And the interrupt service routine uh, does whatever it has to do. Eventually, the uh, interrupt handler ends and is, has finished dealing with the interrupt. and to return to the application program that was interrupted, the handler executes the return from interrupt instruction. So here's another instruction, RETI, the return from interrupt instruction. And what this does is it pops the program counter from the stack. Okay, The, the, the program counter that was pushed here, presumably. And it also re-enables interrupts. So the 
I bit in the status register is flipped back to indicate that global interrupts are enabled. 